What's up guys, this is Mia Sin, and yes, I have managed to get 4th place at YCS Lille this past weekend with Smith Ubel. This is just completely unbelievable, I still can't get over what happened, I'm at a loss for words, I'm still under the emotions and everything because this is the best performance of my life, I have never gone closer to getting to the finals, and I think there even was a world in which I could have won the whole YCS. To me, honestly, this whole experience just proved me that I do have what it takes to win a YCS, and it really just inspired me to keep going even further and try to deck build and play test even better so that next time I do get it. But yeah, in case you didn't know, I did play the event with Fiendsmith Hubel and I lost on feature match on top 4 against uh, Julius who played uh, the plan deck. So huge congrats to you if you're watching this and uh, shoutouts to you. I didn't really know what the cards did, so obviously uh, I am bound to misplay against the deck. That kind of makes sense. It's not like I was uh, fully briefed on how to utilize all of my hand traps correctly. And either way, with uh, an early uh, Regulus, it's not like my Nibiru would have done much of anything but even then I still should have waited until the very end so that I could potentially draw one more card off of Mudan potentially if it's a Veil or Imperium I could have paired it up on Nibiru uh spoiler alert it wasn't uh the Ogre was obviously incorrect the Veiler apparently was not incorrect that's what Julius said we did uh, talk a little bit towards the end and he told me about the uh, Forbidden Droplet by the way uh, so I knew I was gonna lose it's not like I was really surprised and uh, a lot of people by the way kind of made their own ideas of what happened during the match which are by the way completely incorrect correct so tomorrow i'm gonna make a full video on what happened on my top four match and explain to you uh, what are all my mistakes what i could have done better what did i learn at the end of the day and how i uh, plan on improving for the future but yeah the experience itself was extremely enjoyable because uh i don't know if you know this but i am uh, from montreal canada i'm not american uh, everybody for some reason thinks i am uh, which means that of course french is my first language which is the main reason why i wanted to go to ycs lille because there is no language barrier for me so i can actually understand and communicate with people very well and most of my opponents were French and everyone was just so freaking nice I still can't get over just how awesome my opponents were and as a matter of fact this is something that I don't really do often but I will be shouting out all of my opponents here so round one I played against Matt from the UK uh, it was a Ubel mirror match so huge shout outs to you round two I played against Vanille from France who was playing White Forest Runic shout outs to you round three I did play against a French player I don't really remember your name sorry about that but uh, yeah he did tell me that he was from Matt Madagascar and Bolivia, and he played Labyrinth Fiendsmith, very interesting, I did win that as well. Uh, round 4 was my loss, so I lost against Chimera Fiendsmith, very nice deck as well. Not even French player, but I think from Switzerland, and he's a uh, Turkish. I also forgot your name, but shoutouts to you. Round 5, I played against Manon, a French girl, played Melodious, uh, shoutouts to you as well. Round 6, I forgot the exact order, but I'm pretty sure I played against James from the UK, who played Memento. Round 7, I played against Esteban, the uh, European champion, actually went to Worlds with Ubel, but he uh, got the uh, European European champion title with Tenpai and he also played Tenpai against me and I won as well but huge shout outs to you and also round 8 I played against Thibaut from France who played uh, Fiendsmith Ubel so again another Ubel mirror match. Now day 2 round 9 I played against uh, a Bulgarian player I have no idea what your name is because I couldn't read it but huge shout outs to you if you're watching this. Round 10 uh, another French player who played Tenpai Dragon kind of forgot your name really sorry but shout outs to you and finally round 11 I played against Fernando on Tenpai Dragon and uh, he actually managed to make it all the way to top 8 with the deck so massive Massive shoutouts to you. Top 32, I played against Ilias from France, who played uh, Ubel again, so another mirror match. Top 16, I played against Philip, who was on Snake Eye, and it was really unfortunate for him the way I won, but, you know, uh, when you have a lot of hand traps, it is what it is, right? Because my uh, game 2, I bricked on too many hand traps, and then I eventually unbricked, and I was able to full combo, and he didn't really have anything to stop me. Now, top 8, I played against Thomas, and this was the best match of my entire life. It was super grindy, super back and forth. I lost the dice roll, and I still had to grind through a huge board. And it was just so enjoyable overall. Huge shoutouts to you if you're watching this, Thomas. I had so much fun. And if only it was a feature match, it would have been amazing. And finally, uh, in top four, I played against Julius and I lost. And in the battle for the bronze, I played against my friend Mario from Montreal. So yeah, huge shoutouts to the Montreal community. Huge shoutouts to my, all my friends. Uh, huge shoutouts to Simon He for uh, who I was uh, rooming with. Shoutouts to Chris LeBlanc and Landon Oliver who were supposed to be uh, there with me. But unfortunately, they missed their flights. And also shoutouts to everyone else who supported me and everything. You guys know who you are. My bad if there's uh, way too many names. Uh, but yeah, with that being said, let's get right into the deck profile. Alrighty, so for the deck profile, uh, I'm going to start with the main deck, obviously. 
obviously. And uh, also, by the way, sorry about the bad quality. I'm filming this uh, with my webcam. My good quality camera can be used for my face because obviously my face is the most important thing about this whole video, right? For the one card starters, we got three Samsara, obviously, alongside three Dark Beckoning Beasts. And then we got the three Engraver and the one Lurie. So all these are all the monsters that when you draw them, you know for a fact that you're making at least like five interruptions, something like that. It depends. And also this deck is very good at beating Evenly and Dark Ruler one or the other, right? And not both at the same time if you uh, can get access to your Unchained Engine. And obviously we also got the four Field Spells and the two Tracked and one One for One. So that's 17 one card starters in a 43 card deck list. If my maths are correct, that is a 93.16% chance of having one of these one card starters. Now this doesn't account the uh, possible two card combos that you may have with other cards in the deck. But yeah, 17 cards that when you draw them, you're in a very, very good mood. So for the uh, combo pieces, I guess you can say these are the cards that don't really do anything on their own, but there are still cards that you gotta play. So opening of the Spirit Gates, Nightmare Pain, two Squirmer, uh, the three Ubel monsters, and the Sharvara. Uh, so yeah, you, you draw like any of these cards. It's not necessarily bad. It's not necessarily great. It really just de depends. Okay, I don't know if this is like visible enough, but um, the Spirit of Ubel, uh, I only play one. Some people play two, some other play three, which is too much. This card is not necessarily great to draw, so I think as a one of it's more than enough. Uh, the Nightmare Pain, some people also play two. I don't understand why. If this one gets like destroyed, opening can recycle it back, but to be fair, this didn't come up a single time in the event. And the biggest difference that I have from other deck lists is that I am one of the only players who played Escape in the YCS. Most people played Chamber. As a matter of fact, I didn't encounter this card once in the whole event. This card was completely broken, and one of the main reasons why it did so well, destroying a card and also dodging evenly and stuff like that is just, it comes up a lot. And the second Squirmer, it's really just to feel a little safer. If you get a hand shaft, uh, or if your Samsara gets imprinted preemptively, you can still special summon this and then revive back. Uh, it's just an overall really good card. And by the way, the Terra Incarnate, I side out a lot because it's a huge brick, and some people just don't. And they keep in the second Spirit, which I think is just way too many bricks, so I don't really recommend. All right, so for the hand shops now, we got 17 hand shops, so just as many hand shops as one card starters. So again, the exact same likelihood of drawing a hand shop. So three Ash, three uh, Veiler, three Imperm, as well as three Nibiru. Uh, because of the uh, amount of hand shops that I played, Nibiru is actually fine to, to play in this deck. Otherwise, it's not necessarily the, the best. Two Ogre, as well as one Mourner. So Ogre wasn't too great for me, but I still wanted to play it. And it's also a good card that you can draw, I mean, as your sixth card, and it can still kind of do something. Mourner is there because it's a wind monster with zero attack. So if my opponent summons Kwaki Meru Drago off of Hieratic Seal, at least my Metal Tronius that I do play in the side deck can be used to target the Kwaki Meru Dragon and at least negate that. So I don't have to solely rely on Imperm. And finally, we played a two Bestial Monster, so the Magnemote and Jewish Worm, which aren't the best cards in the deck, but Magnemote is unfair. The, the main reason why I play Bestials. Bestials are either very good if you fully dedicate to them by playing like Phantasmi and Baldrake, so that your Baldrake can always banish a card, which also, again, only really works if you're also playing like Molchami and Nibiru, which might not necessarily be worth doing if you're playing the small hand shops like Veiler, Imperm, Ash, etc. Uh, so yeah, it's really just a question of what is your approach to things. These uh, hand shops worked out really well for me, so honestly, no complaints. I will probably just keep playing hand shops like that in the future, just because they can also be used against like Tenpai and stuff. Whereas if you just play a bunch of Bestials, Nibiru and stuff like that, you're just gonna get demolished by uh, Tenpai. You're gonna have nothing to defend yourself, and if you get Shifter, you lose the game. Anyways, we're gonna start with the extra deck, might as well. Uh, so yeah, two Phantom of Ubel, obviously the Aerial Eater, Neko Curb, DSE Ray, Caesar alongside Varudras as an Omni Negate. I summon these cards quite often. Fiendsmith cards that you need for the package. Again, all of this makes sense. The Muckraker, when all you have is like Engraver or Luri, you're forced to go into this because you got no other way of running back the Samsara that you foolished with this. So this is basically the Beatrice of the deck. And then two Yama, which the second one is a must if you're playing es uh, Escape. The Unchain Soul of Rage and the SP that you can summon off of that. The, the extra deck space is ultra tight. Not a lot of things that you can really change about this. If you want to play like the third Phantom of Ubel, you're going to have to make like a concession, maybe cut the second Yama, which I'm not a really big fan of. But then I guess you can play a Chamber instead. Or you can cut nothing. <laughs> yeah, nothing is cuttable. It's, man, the Fiendsmith cards, I swear to God, that's like the biggest drawback with them. They really just force you to play like the most weird extra deck out there. Anyways, for the side deck, we are playing a bunch of very good cards going second. So Change of Heart, the three Metal Tronius, as well as three uh, Mulchami Parolia. So my side deck pattern going second against the, the mirror match. By the way, I went fully undefeated against my Ubel mirrors. So I'm like 5-0 and oh at the YCS against them. The one match that destroyed me the most was the one matchup where I just didn't know what my opponent's deck was. 
is. And of course, that's what knocked me out of the tournament. It was Rika. But apart from that, I understand how to beat every other deck. So I really built my side deck to beat them. And yeah, no, th this was like optimal against Tubel. These are the best cards against them. So Mochami, obviously, it forces them to play weaker. Metal Chonius, it's really good at targeting like Caesar and then summoning your own DS Ray because both are fiends with 2800 attack. And then Change of Art, fantastic card. Also, better than Mind Control and Snatch Steel because it's really harder to stop. So if your opponent has like Cosmic, which is a very good card going first against the Mirror, then at least you don't have to be afraid of that. So yeah, honestly, all these cards were great and uh, also somewhat generic. Like there are some other matchups where you can side them in. I mean, especially the Mochami, but like Metal Chonius, for example, even against like Snake Eye, I would still side this card in. And this actually got me a game. Well, th that was the card that got me the match in my top 16 against Phillips. Uh, huge shout to you, by the way, against uh, Snake Eye. So yeah, uh, for the other cards in my side, three Cosmic Cyclone, which I never drew, so I can't really tell you if this is good or not. Three Talent, as well as one Call by the Grave. Yeah, the, the games where I drew like Talent, because I didn't draw Call by the Grave, I think, but I drew Talent like once or twice, and I immediately won that game. And finally, the um, Unchained Soul of Anguish, which I only summoned once, and it got Ogred anyway, so <laughs> it's not like it really mattered. Yeah, so that's about it for the deck profile, but again, huge shoutouts to everyone that I met at the event. The experience was completely fantastic, and again, I've lost my voice at the event because I kept like talking and I didn't really sleep too much. I was, as a matter of fact, on zero hours of sleep for D1 and only three hours of sleep for D2 and then another three hours of sleep after D2. So when I was trying to go back home because my flight was super early on and oh, I'm, I'm still kind of tired even right now. So I'm really just forcing myself to do this deck profile. I could have done it when uh, we were still in the uh, venue. Battle for the Bronze ended pretty much at the same time as the finals. So we were playing a lot of yu gi Mons this uh, this past weekend and we were a little too tired to film anything after and also like I said I didn't have any voice uh, back then and uh, everyone who was there to witness all my matches and everyone and, and everyone who also met me can uh, confirm that I could barely speak back then but yeah thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and I will be back with more videos concerning my experience at YCS Lil very soon so stay tuned and I'll see you guys very soon peace